morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everyone out this morning. Uh, turn over to Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. Uh, we've got an announcement. Of, seems to me we've got a planning committee meeting tonight. Remember, uh, state, Congress, and Senate are still in session. You can still make your voice heard about our, mm-hmm. our laws concerning abortion, gambling, for and against. We've still got them out there. Take one, read it. You can still make a phone call. Mm-hmm. Follow up on this. We're Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. If you found it, please say amen. Amen. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood far off, and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Show yourself, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Let's pray. Precious Heavenly Father, I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for the freedom and opportunity to come out and, and worship you, Lord, in this, in this in this church house. Thank you for the congregation that you gather together to worship you, Father. I pray that you go through your word that you'll touch our hearts and keep us with an open mind and an open heart and ready to receive your word, Father. I pray that we'll learn and grow from it and lives will be changed because of your Holy Spirit moving in our life, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Excuse me. You're going to have to pray for me this morning. About three weeks, I've had this cold and I can't shake it. pray the Lord will quicken me this morning. Yeah. Yeah. Preach better than I sang this morning. I'm going to get right yet. Uh, I'm talking about lepers. These scriptures are about lepers. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jerome mentioned it last week or week before he was talking about lepers. It's an awful, disgusting disease. Uh, skin disease. Your skin falling off of you. Fingertips, nose and ears and things coming. It's just, I can't even imagine. I had a funny thought yesterday if I was really wanting to go on a diet and just hang pictures of lepers all around the kitchen. I probably wouldn't be able to eat very well. Mm. It's a terrible thing to have. It says in verse 12, the, le- the ten lepers stood far off because, well, because they were lepers. That was, it was the law. Mm-hmm. Leviticus thirteen forty six says, All the days wherein the plague shall be in him, he shall be defiled. He is unclean. He shall dwell alone without the camp shall his habitation be. Uh, Moses gave laws, well, it wasn't Moses, it was the Lord. The Lord gave the law to keep the sick out of the masses, to protect them from themselves. <clears throat> but in verse 13 it says, And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They cried out to the Master. From afar, they they recognized that Jesus was God. They had faith that He could help them. They believed it. What's He say in verse 14? And when He saw them, He said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. You ask yourself, well, why did He say that? And, and I'm going to turn back to Leviticus. It goes back to Leviticus 14. In the first three verses, we'll learn it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, 
This shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest. And the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper. Jesus said to them, after they cried out for help, He didn't even go over to them. As near as I can read in my Bible, He just said, go, go show yourself to the priest. In the beginning of Leviticus 14, the priest would go out of the camp and look for lepers that had been healed. Mm-hmm. See, what the, what the priest was going to do in, in the whole chapter of Leviticus 14 is about what they had to do was a ceremony. It was a ceremonial healing. But they were already healed before they went through the ceremony. Yep. So Jesus says to them, go show yourselves to the priest. It says, as they went... They were healed. Hello? Yep. Yep. Hello? Yep. They were healed before yep. they got to the priest. There's no need to go see the priest unless you were healed. Yeah. Because all the priest could do was a ceremonial healing. Mm-hmm. You had to be cured. You had to be healed before you went to the priest. So they cried out to Jesus, and he just says. Go show yourself to the priest. Their faith healed them instantly. As they went, they were obedient. Yeah. Amen. The Bible says, man, this Bible, I'll tell you, Amen. get into this Bible. Why would you deprive yourself of, of the excitement that is in this Bible? Yeah. Yes, sometimes yeah. it's hard to muddle through some of it. But every once in a while you find a gem, like three little words, as they went. As they went. The priests went looking for people. They couldn't heal anybody. The sacrifices were ceremonial. If you read through there, they had to have birds and, and, and hyssop and, and cedar and oil and lambs. There was shedding of the blood, but it's all ceremonial. All sacrifices were ceremonial. The only one, the only sacrifice that really forgave anybody that healed anybody was the work Jesus Christ did on the cross. Yeah. It was His shedding of blood yeah. that did the healing, that did the, did the forgiving. But in verse 15, <coughs> the Bible says in one of them when he saw that he was healed, turned back, and with a loud voice, glorified God. One. One of them came back, and with a loud voice, he praised God. Yeah. Yep. Only one of them. And he praised God. That tells me, it says in 16, he fell to the ground at Jesus' feet and thanked Him for healing. Excuse me. <coughs> This man was a Samaritan. He was an outsider. He was not one of the one that's chosen. You ever have a non-Christian tell you how a Christian's supposed to be? It happens all the time. But it makes you kind of laugh. It makes you kind of guilty too, though. They look at your life and say, "You're supposed to do different than that." A Christian's supposed to do this. A Christian's supposed to do that. Why is it sometimes it seems like non-Christians know better what a Christian ought to be doing than the one who was forgiven, the one who was healed, the one who was in the family? This man was a foreigner. I wonder where the where the thankful beggars are. There was ten beggars. Let's face it. There was ten of them. And when they had leprosy, they were begging for mercy. And as soon as they're healed, some of them just kept going. Now maybe they're being obedient. They just kept going. God, uh, Jesus told them, go to see the priest. Well, let's do what he said. But one of them had the, the sense to thank God. He realized what had happened and who had done it. Where are the thankful beggars today? 
I'm afraid that nine out of ten Christians forget who healed them. When I understand this Bible, Jesus expects us to be thankful. He expects us to come to Him and thank Him and praise Him. It says in there, He did it with a loud voice. So many of us, when we want to thank God, we want to do it behind closed doors. We want to hide in a closet. Nobody falls down on their face anymore. These men were begging for mercy publicly. And one of them glorified God publicly. The way we ought to do today. The thing about Christianity is, and the way this Bible, it amazes me, this Bible, how it all is connected together. Jesus told them to go see the priest for the ceremonial cleansing. Mm -hmm. We've talked about it the last few weeks, and, and Roby sent me a, an email about Paul and James, how people find that a, a contradiction. Paul said, You're justified by your faith. And James said, By your works you'll be justified. And they're talking about two different things. Paul was talking about being justified before God. And James is talking about being justified before men. That your faith will heal you. These men's faith in Jesus healed them. And then they had to go see the priest to be cleansed by men before men. To show that they've been healed. Our lives, after we're born again, after we're saved, should be different. Correct. Right. People should be able to tell that our lives have changed. We yeah. should live a life that says something about Jesus. People say they're born again. Man, a nine, nine out of ten of them, you could never tell. Just like the Bible says there about those people. Nine, is, that, is that prophetic or what? Nine out of ten of them just kept on walking. Thank you, Lord. Didn't even, as far as the Bible says, didn't even do that. Never came back. But one man was changed. One man came back and hit his knees before the Almighty. Said, Thank you. And praised him. And we're healed by our faith, but our faith should be evident before men. Just like the ceremonial sacrifice that the lepers had to go through. They had to shave their whole whole body twice. The blood was shed. So that the, the, the village, the, the camp, could see that they were healed. Mm -hmm. In our lives, everybody around us should see that we're healed. There's a difference. Verse 18 says that only a stranger, a foreigner, showed any praise to the one they had called Master. Only one. And verse 19 says, And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. His faith had made him whole. If you read different commentaries, some people think that maybe it means more than just a physical healing. Some think that maybe when Jesus said he was made whole, maybe he was spiritually made whole. I don't know. That's, that's questionable. But for sure, it was faith in Jesus that cleansed him. It was faith in Jesus that healed him. Leprosy is an ugly and disgusting disease, a skin disease if you have it, everybody can see it. And I think about sin in the same light. What if sin was a physical manifestation of our, of, in a form of leprosy? You can't see it, but what if you could? What if when God looks at us, He sees that all over us? 
That's sin all over. It's just like leprosy. It's vile, and he hates it. If we're going to be healed, we need to beg the Master for mercy to be forgiven. God wants to heal every one of us. Mm -hmm. But there's only one way. Jesus is the only way. We have to go and seek Him. Mm -hmm. Call on His name. People say they believe in God. Church-going people say they believe in God. Muslims believe in God. Just about all people in America say they believe in some kind of God. But Jesus said He's the truth, the life, and the way. The lepers believed before they called His name or they wouldn't have, have, have called out to Him. If you haven't called out to Him, is it because you don't believe? They had faith. They believed Him. They knew who He was before they called out. If you never call on the name of Jesus, you got to wonder why. For some reason, people just stumble over that. Stubborn. Hmm. If you believe that you are saved, you ought to be changed. Yeah. We've gotten... Yep. So hard in our in our in our country. So we willfully sin, publicly sin, seemingly without remorse. Even as Christians, because of God's grace, His mercy, we take it way too far. I'm here to tell you today that. Many of us ought to be on our knees before Jesus. And any one of us perfect. And none of us lived our lives perfectly last week. I'm glad last week is over. I had a hard week. Went back to work Monday at 3 o'clock in the morning. You can imagine what that looked like driving to Frankfurt in the dark. It was awful. But I don't deserve any better. I'm still a sinner. And I need to seek out God's forgiveness daily. If you want to have a better week than you had last week, you need to throw off those chains. So many times we get cleansed of our leprosy, of our sin, and then we go out and pick it back up and put it back out again. Jesus takes the chains of, of, of bondage and slavery and sin off of us, and we go out and we pick them up and put them back on again. Then wonder why we don't feel right. Wonder why we don't feel happy. I have Christians tell me, I'm just not feeling it. You talk about the Holy Spirit and how great it is and everything, I just don't get it. it gives me the idea that a person like that has picked up some sin and, and put it back on again. He's got their back turned to God. We need to keep throwing it off. Yep. We need to ask forgiveness. We need to we need to get rid of that unconfessed sin. There's no categories of bad sin and good sin. The sin of silence is sin. Mm-hmm. If the Lord moved you to talk to somebody and you didn't do it, it's your sin. Mm-hmm. We need to get right. As believers, we need to get right. We need to get Keep the cleansing clean. We feel a chain now, uh, throw it off again. Ask Jesus, help me with this. Please help me. <coughs> if you believe that the Bible says it's true and that Jesus is the only way, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, if you believe that He was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, was hung on a cross to pay for our sins, was buried in a tomb for three days and 
on the third day He was resurrected, if you believe all that, then say so and accept yep. Him as your Lord and Savior. Right. Be saved today. Right. It's not good enough to be a friend of the church, to be a friend of the of God, to be a, a friend of Jesus, to be friendly, not to say anything against Him. You've got to accept Him. The gift is there. You've got to receive it. Yep. You've got to take it. You've got to put your faith in Jesus. Not good enough just to believe. You've got to, you've got to trust Him with your life, with your very soul, with your eternity. Mm-hmm. Take hold of it. Pick it up. Take it home. Live with it. Live in it. Grow in grace, the Bible says. That's right. Never hold that door. Let's all stand together. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this message that you give us this morning. I thank you for this beautiful day, your love, your kindness, and your mercy, and your healing. I thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm thankful that you've given us this time to come and lay our burdens down. That we have the promise that we'll just call on you. That you'll heal us in our obedience, believing that that's the only way. And that you can, that you have the power to, and that you will. If there's anyone here this morning that hasn't, I pray that you lay down their hearts and not let them have a moment of peace until they get it right. Not a moment of peace, Lord. Until they get right with you. So they can have true eternal peace. Pray for these, these souls. Please help us, Lord. Please help us to be obedient. Have your will done today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.